Hi everyone, we're going to uh, talk today about the frontiers of microeconomics. This is the chapter 22 of the book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So first, we know that economics, at the end of the day, try to understand the interactions and decisions of individuals then obviously we have been um, making like several assumptions throughout the chapters in order to arrive to different conclusions. However, uh, we know that all these decisions, uh, we have seen they are not perfect at the end of the day. So we're going to split this, um, this situation in three in order to analyze better the idea of the frontiers of microeconomics. So the first thing that we want to introduce to you is a part of asymmetric information. As the, as the name says, is like the informations inside a part is not balanced because some people, they have better, uh, inform, better information to the other ones. So some people better informed than others. Obviously, because of this information, some part of the, of the market can take advantage of that and then naturally the end situation is not going to be the expected. Then, uh, well, this is the, 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 the point, and then the other part is political economy. So we already knew that government policy can affect the market and influence the results. So as you know, government can intervene in the market outcome with different instruments. So then we have already seen the, the power of subsidies, the power of taxes, the power of quotas uh, to the imports or um, any other ways or mechanism that the government use. And the last one, but no least, is the part of behavior economics. This is a really interesting part that is like psychology. With the tools of psychology, it goes to the study or in order to understand some economic issues in order to make uh, a little bit more realistic the um, situation. So then we're going to provide a basic understanding of the ground. As you know, this is a, a basic economics course, but you can go deeper as you want to this, uh, even in ma master's degree uh, and PSG programs of economics, they go really, really deep to this because it's still really open and there are different, different branches that they have been uh, created from this part. Then, we're going to start to develop the idea of asymmetric information. So, as we have, uh, as we have said before, people, they have different access to information or knowledge. Then, definitely, this is relevant to make decision. For this reason, it's called information, uh, the information is asymmetric. Let's go to some examples to understand better this point. Let's think about a worker. Definitely a worker knows more how much effort he puts in the job. So this is a hidden action. Imagine the situation of home office. You can uh, several multinationals or companies or even a freelance or someone that can develop uh, um, his or her job in his or her house, then no one is like uh, taking care of what, what they are doing. So then definitely this is a problem of information because if the boss of that person actually doesn't know if this person is really putting uh, the, the, export, the effort required. Or the part is a seller of a, of a used car because definitely the, the person that that have that has possession for this car knows more than the buyer about the car's condition. So this is a hidden 
characteristic. Then, as you can see here, there is another part of this game, of, of this situation, which is the uninformed party, which could be, in the first one should be the employer, and in the, in the other part, in the other example of the car, should be the buyer. Definitely, they would like to know relevant information. The employer would like to know the, the worker is really um, making effort. Or on the other side, the car buyer would like to know the real condition of that car. Then, the informed party may have an incentive to conceal it. Then, and the asymmetric information, we're going to go through hidden actions. And we're going to talk about principles, agents, and moral hazard. So remember, this is the situation of the worker, for example. The moral hazard is a problem that arises when one person, that is, this person is called the agent, is performing some task on behalf of the other person, called the principal. It's like the agent kind of subordinate of the principal. Then, the point here is like the informed party is, um, is the agent, but the uninformed party is the principal. Then, the principal cannot perfectly monitor the agent's behavior. So then it's like this between quotation mark, moral hazard could be like the risk to make something immoral. To say, I know that is not okay, but I don't care because the other party cannot, cannot see that. So this is, the, this is the moral hazard. So there is the employment relationship as the example that we presented before, the employer as the principal and the worker as the agent. Obviously, when you are when you are uh, in your at your home and no one is like uh, looking at you, maybe you know that you have like temptation to shirk res the responsibilities. So then, for example, could be solve this situation with better monitoring. Obviously, it's, it uh, it's cost, but then it is a way to manage the problem more a hazard because if you know there are hidden cameras you can control it but at the end of the day maybe people they know that they are going to they are uh, vigilated by someone so maybe they will exert uh, effort then other part that can be uh, can be the solution of that it could be high wages actually we have already talked about that in chapter 19 with the efficiency wage theories. You know, the workers with higher salaries, they, they definitely, they are, uh, they are less likely to shirk. Because obviously, if you are fired, it's really difficult to find the same level, uh, the same level of salary outside. So then, maybe you don't have like really high uh, temptation to shirk because if you're cut maybe the point is like you're going to be fired so then this should be uh, another way or then maybe a uh, delayed payment because obviously if worker is caught shirking and fired maybe this bonus that this person is going to wait this person cannot receive so maybe those people they are more uh, tempted to work more to exert more effort so then this could be another mechanism to avoid uh, shirking then other example in order to grasp better the idea of the problems of moral hazard and the relationship between principles and agents is like the homeowners and insurance company in this case, think a little bit which should be the principal and which should be the agent. Maybe stop the video that time. Okay. Uh, at this point, so the idea is like definitely the, the homeowners, they are the agents. Why? Because they are the informed. They know that if, they, if they take care of their houses, they have all the control or protection for fire 
or maybe protection for the hurricanes or something like that. But insurance companies, definitely, they do have access to that information. So this is the uninformed party. Maybe in some part, the whole homeowners, they will take advantage of that situation in order to make, uh, make like some benefits that they are not reflected by the prime that they are paying for the insurance. Then, moving to the hidden characteristics, so we already mentioned the hidden action. So these uh, hidden characteristics, we're going to talk about adverse selection and the lemon problem. The adverse selection is like the seller knows more information than buyer does. So then definitely the seller, you, we should be agent or the, the principal. Obviously it should be the agent because this is the informed party. The other part, the buyer, they don't know. So then the buyer uh, faces a risk of buying a good of low quality. This is the risk. And then we go to the market of the used cards, cars, that they are the most important example of that situation of hidden characteristic of adverse selection. Then the buyer are apprehensive of buying a lemon, a bad quality car. Then this is, uh, this is one of the reasons why a car uh, older of few weeks compared with brand new car is sometimes thousands of dollars so this is really interesting because for example if you go to buy a, maybe a car of the 2019 but maybe with two or three weeks you know it's something kind of strange that you're going to buy a car uh, and this person just buy like three weeks before and this person is already uh, selling it is something wrong with this car? So maybe something related with a lemon. Then another example of adverse selection is the labor market, because uh, the point is like there there is um, different information between worker and the firms, because the workers they know more about their abilities that firms do, right? Because obviously the, the company is like kind of a lottery. They can go to a CV. They can go through um, some experience, some calls, some projects. But maybe at the end of the day, they cannot find really if this person is good enough for that work. If this person is lazy. If this person is going to fulfill the commitment. Okay, anyway. Then, another important part of the hidden characteristic is the health insurance then maybe people really healthy they have to pay exactly the same with the same age the same characteristics to another guy that is 30 but maybe this person have like chronic disease or whatever so this person is going to ask for more uh, benefits for that policy so then definitely from one part part the healthy guy needs to pay more and the unhealthy guy needs to pay less so maybe the the price of the market doesn't reflect the real price then for example the sellers of, of a good car they don't want to sell to skeptical buyer because they will pay less for the good Imagine that you, you, you just have like maybe something unexpected and you need to sell the car, but you know that this is a good car, but it's not going to be okay if someone is skeptical is going to buy it because this person is going to offer definitely less money than the, the, the real one of the market. The other part, for example, the firms, they will pay higher salaries and it could cause uh, more unemployment. Because you already know that um, the, the salary in the market is not actually the one of the equilibrium parts. So for this reason, this is an imbalance between supply and demand. And this difference between supply and demand is what we call unemployment. So then, because you, um, you need to like buy uh, or pay higher salaries in order to find the real good uh, workers that they are tempted to change of work or maybe to work in your company so definitely they could cause more uh, unemployment the other part the healthy people um, uh, don't buy insurance 
because insurance companies fail to establish the right price to them so maybe some discrimination should be required because again this is asymmetric information the the information that the the agent in this case the potential insurer um, doesn't doesn't have the same information to the to the to the company right then how to try to make some solution to asymmetric information how can the part the uninformed part find some information to not to fail in order to establish a price maybe to find the real price the correct one to make this uh, transaction done so then signaling offer a way of solving the situation of asymmetric information actually we have already seen something related with that so signaling is uh, we can consider it as a way to inform private information uh, in chapter 16 we know that um, advertising to show that they are selling a high quality product so for example you know some cereal is going to make a really advertisement sponsored uh, or made, made by Michael Jordan or by Jaime Rodriguez our best Colombia player definitely you know you as a buyer you will say come on they those people they're spending a lot of money for that advertisement so then uh, I will pay I will pay it because this is a good product because otherwise they will not make an advertisement because they spend a lot of money you just consume it once because this is awful this is terrible product no this doesn't make any sense you suppose that this should be a terrific product really good one so then this is a way of signaling in order to avoid the asymmetric information other way that we have seen the signaling is the cha in chapter 20 that we uh, we talk about the the human resources that they have traveled to find really good candidates met but the CV and the degree of that student could be a signaling because if you receive a guy from Harvard and you receive a guy from um, another university that is not that good as Harvard for example University Bologna University is a good one I really appreciate it but definitely unfortunately it's better Harvard right so then they will choose Harvard guy because this is a signaling that this person should be better right maybe for this reason I'm not a professional teacher at this time uh, maybe it's a way of signaling. Then uh, the other part uh, provide uh, to an informed party that this is the good. The the good is a high quality. So this is the idea. Make some uh, way to find that those people that they don't have information they receive it throughout signaling. And then the problem is like signal costs. You know, from the from the first example of the advertiser, you need to spend a lot of money. And the other guy from the from the university, this person need to need to study in the in those in those universities and spend time and effort to do it definitely. Then um, the firms that advertise customers that try product once, they will likely be, become common users because that's that's like marketing, right? If you have a look to my channel and you like it definitely you will continue to consume videos if you hate it you won't consume anymore actually you will put a comment that you don't speak good English you are really bad and maybe I know okay okay thank you then to enter into specific school is hard then for more talented students choose to get education as signal a signal so firms will pay attention to this information so this is what we have talked before then another way we already talk about signaling so we continue uh, in ways to solve the situation of asymmetric information this should be a screening to uncover private information so it happens when an informed party tries to convey informed party to reveal information is screening how we can maybe understand better that for example a buyer of a car 
can make an inspection of medical situation of a car. So this should be in screening. So find a way to discover, to uncover the private information. So those information of the car, an expert should say, you know, for uh, a car of 2018, maybe the condition of that car is not really good. You know, so maybe this should be something like that. For other part, for example, in the in the situation of the insurance companies, they uh, they trying to find if the driver, for example, an insurance for a car, the driver is risky or safe. So maybe they will go to to different accidents that those person they they have had. But obviously, we know that unfortunately, an and car accident. This is not just because you're a bad driver, but maybe because of something external situation that make an accident. So then definitely randomness could be an important issue. But then maybe they can they can manage with different products of insurance. So they can say, okay, I'm going to go I'm going to offer one with deductible of uh, one thousand. Maybe an order with deductible five thousand dollars. Deductible is a price is that you money that you need to spend, and then above that uh, that quantity, the insurance will make uh, will be responsible for that. So definitely, the all risk protection will reveal reveal the situation of drivers that they are bad at the wheel. Then. The, the the other one that we have already said uh, we have already seen is like chapter seven that market is the most efficient results in terms of total workforce. Obviously, in this situation, we cannot make that because there is a problem of asymmetric information. And then uh, the part that we have seen in ten is the study of externalities or chapter tw eleven. The, the situation of the public goods. In chapter 15 and 17, the part of imperfect competition, and chapter 20, uh, poverty. And we have seen in those chapters that government can sometimes improve market outcomes. So it is how maybe uh, uh, throughout asymmetric information could be public policy make some change. So then, for example, uh, people with high quality of car then uh, have trouble when others think that they sell a lemon. This should be a, an issue. And the other part is like healthy people, they have trouble with health insurance because maybe they have to pay more to the real price. Then, the government can intervene in these markets. Obviously, there are a few problems. In the parts of private markets uh, can deal with advantages of screening and signaling that we have already seen. The point is like government hardly ever has more information than private parties. Maybe it can be the best that can be a shift. So maybe government could be better avoid intervening in that situation. As you know, the point of that, of public policy, of the point that we want to go, is like the government itself is an imperfect institution, and we will see it. The part of that. So then, political economy. So we're going to go to the Condorcet voting paradox. Uh, then we know that public choice, uh, it uses methods of economics to study how government works from the economic point. Then, as an example, a public park, the construction of a public park, the question should be where uh, should be located and definitely there are different possibilities and this should be really hard to find the more or the most efficient location for that park. So then, uh, at this situation, imagine that there are three outcomes. So this situation of the location of the parks, if you want. So then, we have, we, let's understand well this table. We have a border type, we have three types of borders. Type 1, type 2, and 3. The part of the borders type 1, they are 35%. The type 2, they are 45 
and then the other one 20. If you sum up them, you will end with 100%. The type 1, they will choose as a first option A, then B, and then C, and the other one so on and so forth. So then, if people can choose between B and C, so they say, okay, people, the options are B and C. So then type 1 will choose B because B is preferred to C for type B, sorry, for type 1. Type 2 should choose B again because B actually is the first option and th this would be better than, uh, than C. So then this is go B. Then definitely you have B and B. You will have 80% that choose B. So B is preferable to C for the total population. Then imagine that people they can choose between A and B. So then type 1 they will choose A because A is the first option. Type 3 should be A because A is preferred to B. So then we will have 55% for A. So then A is preferable to B. Then A beats B, right? A beats B. B beats C. Okay, then A is the best option. This is what we call um, transitivity law. But what about if we talk about people can choose between A and C? So then, type 2 goes to C, type 2, C is preferred to A, and then type 3 should choose C. So then we have 65% for C. So then A doesn't beat C. This is what we call the Condorcet voting paradox. So then, what we can conclude, maybe that democratic outcomes do not obey the property of transitivity because A preferred to B, B preferred to C, but A doesn't prefer, uh, A is not preferred uh, to C. So then, depends on how it's asked, the result is different. So then, the majority vote by itself does not tell us what outcome a society really wants. Then, we go to Eros Impossibility Theory. Let's continue with the table that we already know. You know that this should be a situation. Imagine that we're going to give one point for last place, two for the second and three for the points for the first place. So then, for A should be, let's have a look. For for uh, for for a should be three times thirty five. Why three times thirty five? Because three is the first of this one times the percentage, which should be thirty five. Then a should be just one point, should be forty five, and then two times twenty because this is two times 20 and then if you sum them you will get 190. B should be 2, 2 points here, should be 3 points here and then 1 point here and you sum them, so you sum them you get 225. C should be 1 times 35, 2 times 45, 3 times 20. You will end with 185. So then this option should be preferred the B part then the situation here is like we have made that throughout the board account is how it's called making some points to the situation preferred then the idea is like Kenneth Arrow uh, actually he won um, an other prize he tried to establish we should be the best voting system they should it should satisfy three uh, Four situations: an unanimity, un unanimity. Sorry, if everyone prefers A to B, A should be B. Okay, transitivity. 
A beats B, B beats C, and then A should be beat C. Independence of irrelevant alternatives, it means that the ranking between any two outcomes A and B should not spend, it depend on whether some third outcome C is also available. And the last one, no majoros, sorry, no dictators. Then, no voting system can satisfy these properties. Is what we call the arrows impossibility theorem. Actually, if we, if we think about the previous situation, the board account fails to satisfy independence of irrelevant alternatives. Why? Because, okay, the first situation, the cardox paradox, paradox, this is a situation of transitivity, so the democracy, if we make a board account, it makes some problem of that. Why? Let's try to, to make some, 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 some computation. Then, despite the Aristotelian democracy is the leader in terms of choosing leaders, and then imagine the situation of election between army and national parks, then uh, the voters prefer the situation closer to the budget they prefer to spend. Before going this, um, just to this situation, because I just forget, it makes like the board account uh, fails to satisfy independence of irrelevant alternatives. So if you make some computation without C, the result should be different. Let's try to go to the to the conclusion why the median voter is the king. You know that despite the Irish theorem, uh, democracy cannot fulfill all the situation that he proposed. However, is the leader in terms of choosing leaders. Almost all countries, they, they have democracy as the system of election. Imagine the situation of election between army and national parks. Then the voters prefer the election closer to the budget they prefer to spend. So here we have uh, an example of that. This is an histogram. So we have the number of people in percentage. So if you sum them, you get 100%. And between this bar, all 25 people they would like to spend zero dollars for that public policy X and then 20 uh, sorry 5% they would like to spend 20 then according to the median voter should be 10 million why remember the medium the media the medium um, the median of uh, distribution should be the point exactly in the middle, right? So then, in the middle should be the 50, uh, 50 percent. So then you can sum up 25 plus 15 should be 40 plus 6 plus 20 should be 60. So then the median voter is here in this bar. So for this reason, is in red because this should be the median voter. Then, let's go uh, analyze better that situation. Then, the, here we have 100% of voters, and then the outcome will be the voter exactly in the medium of the distribution. And imagine the situation of the average preferred outcome. The average preferred outcome should be uh, a percentage 20, 25 expressed uh, in numbers, so then divided 100 should be 0 0.25 times 0, 0 0.15, this one, times 5, 0 0.2, then the 20% times 10, 0 0.35, then the 35% times 15, and then 5% times 20. Then, if you make that computation, you end up as the best solution should be 9 billion. By, by the model should be 35. What is the model? The model is like the number or the yeah the number that of the of the size of the budget that is more popular. Then is more popular uh, this one 35. So then not 35 billion. So sorry, should be 15. 15 should be the preferred one by the model. And more uh, than 50% have once 10 billion or less. 
So then this is the this is this is the part because if you if you choose like this one, fifteen billion, the part is like fifth more than fifty percent should be to the left. Should be twenty plus um, twenty five should be forty five plus this one should be sixty percent. So then more than fifty percent have once uh, ten billion more. So then it cannot be it cannot be it cannot be uh, possible to make this one because it should be 35 um, plus 5 and plus 20 but then then they would, would like like more than 10 billion so for this situation the median voter is the king so let's imagine for example if the outcome is 8 billion so if you has you have uh, the outcome 8 billions all the people that think higher than 10 billions will prefer 10 billion so for example imagine that we have 8 but what about the people of 15 million? What do they prefer? 8 or 10? They should prefer 10. Right? What about if we we end with 12 million? So we are here, something in between, 12 billion. So all the people that think lower than 10 billion will prefer 10 billion. Right? So all the people lower here, they they will prefer 10 instead of 12. So for this reason, at least there is no Condorcet paradox because the median one beats all other results. Then uh, imagine that one party proposes 15 million, other 10 billion. So then, if the one of tw the 15 billion should be 35, and those those of of five percent of 20 because they prefer 15 instead of 10. So then the total population will be 40% that they prefer 15 billion. But if we move to 10 billion, it should be all these, all these, and all these, and we end with 60%. So the parties move toward the median voter. Then, we know that obviously politicians are people too, okay? then someone they are even not people but whatever so what the point of here of people is that they are trying to make some errors uh, or they try to make some interest we will see it so then we know that consumers and firms they try to maximize their own benefits um, then the politicians are interested on between quotation marks really big i guess that this is too slow it should be like really big Efficiency and equality of society. This is like the idea. So the points like they have a self self interest and they are tempted to sacrifice some global interest for their reelection, for example. So when we talk about political behavior, it's important to take into account that it is performed by humans, that they have naturally human disorders. And then this is the part. Then moving to the last part of behavior economics, then we finish with an important quote. People aren't always rational. Then the behavior economics is like the use of psychological insights into economics. We already know that we have assumptions of rationality of consumers and firms. But definitely you know that people, they can be really forgetful, impulsive, confused, emotional, and short-sighted. Then, the humans uh, consider it better to have a bounded uh, rationality, right? So then, we're going to go to these problems. The first, people are overconfident. So for example, if we, if for uh, some examples that they have already performed in data, for example, someone is asked to give numbers, uh, to give uh, numbers of of the mountain, for example, of the highest mountain in the world, and they say, for example, between a range, give us which should be the meters that this should be considered the mountain is the real high. And when you try to guess this value, you all the time 
get out of the real number because you're overconfident and you make like really small ranges and you cannot um, choose the real value or for example people give too much weight to a small number of vivid observation for example you want to buy some device right and you go to talk to your friend hey man what uh, what is your opinion in regards of this cell phone now this is awful I, I cannot I cannot take a really good selfies so you say okay I'm not gonna buy it but actually if or maybe this is like broken it, it breaks uh, it breaks sorry easily but actually if you go to statistics this is just one situation one specific situation so for example people unfortunately they don't go to Colombia because someone was um, was like uh, some some way it was stolen there so you say okay this is really dangerous but maybe you go through statistics obviously this is not the the best place in the world but actually you can go there and you will you will really like it so then maybe people they give so much weight just for one vivid for, uh, observation then the other part like people are reluctant to change their minds so for example if you have a vision about one specific situation and maybe the you have some reports that they try to develop an idea that is opposed um, to your initial idea then you will not change your mind because people are reluctant to change their minds then people other important facts like people care about fairness so imagine the ultimatum game the ultimatum game is yeah you have two volunteers they don't know each other so then they will play a game and they can win one hundred dollars so the game begins with a coin toss then they will be a or b okay it's like random you you are going to be the a role or b role it's like random then imagine that the A, you, the, the A, it proposed a division of the 100 between himself and the other player. Then the, the other player B, he decides to accept, accept or reject it. So if B accepts, they will get A's, get a, A's proposal. If B rejects, two will get zero, nothing. So then, as you know, because of Nash, the conventional economics will say that A will propose 99 US dollars to him and the rest for B. If B is rational, what should be better? One dollar or zero? One dollar. So then B should take it. So then the Nash equilibrium should be 99 one split is the Nash equilibrium. Remember the definition of Nash equilibrium. This is the part where no one of the players they have any incentives to move it. But what happened in real life? In real life, I believe you're not going to be like really asshole to propose the other guy one dollar. You will say, okay, I'm going to propose like more than that because otherwise maybe their guy should be. Come on, I'm going to reject it. So then fairness plays an important role in this decision firms and decision of wages then this should be the same then if the firms of decision of wages the firms uh, should propose like the lower salary possible and then the workers they should uh, accept it because it's better to receive something than nothing but obviously the companies they won't receive like the lowest possible wage they they have some conscious so some fairness so just not people care about fairness but in some way uh, companies as well so then the other problem that we have with people is like people are inconsistent over time so for example would you prefer a what is the situation of a to spend 50 minutes doing the task right now or be to spend 60 minutes doing the task tomorrow definitely you will prefer tomorrow I don't want to do something now or the other part would you prefer a to spend 50 minutes doing the task in 90 days or spend 60 minutes doing the task task in 91 days 
Well, you say, come on, there I will prefer the one in the in the United States because it's just 50. Then definitely in situation one you prefer B and situation two you prefer A. So then people are inconsistent over time. Then, for example, people trying to stop smoking. Ah, just this one, the last one, you know. But the people say this same decision in one month and, and stop the next day, you will say, okay, come on, I will stop the 90 in the 19th day. Or the same thing with the lose weight. Okay, I'm going to go on, on a diet on Monday, not today. That's exactly the same. But if you think about in one month, what do you prefer? Monday, Tuesday. Okay, Monday. Because I don't see that really close. So then, instant gratification induces the decision maker to abandon his past plans. So for example, this is a problem for uh, retirement because for this reason I can specifically try to avoid or freeze uh, the quantity that you um, that you uh, take to your bank account in order to avoid the consumption of it. Then, as a conclusion, we know that we, we have just sketched out this amazing, amazing, amazing uh, topic field of the, uh, of the problems of the microeconomics frontiers. Obviously, rather than fully developing them, they can be really tough. And then, this is devoted to make deeper development into advanced courses and then asymmetric information obviously a more worry uh, of market uh, outcomes and start of political economy should make more worry of government and then the behavior economics more worry of any institution that relies on human decision decision making including both the market and the government. I really appreciate your time. You have finished this video. I love it. If you want it, uh, you can subscribe it and you can comment anything that you want. I know that maybe I have like plenty of errors. This is just like my point of view and miss my summary of this book. Thank you so much. Continue studying economics. Bye bye.